After me and the salt shark here, there's been one clear-cut star of this show. I'm talking, of course, about Rakia. It's been here since the very first episode, and it's far and away the number one question I get asked about online. What is Rakia? Where can I get it? So I decided, let's just have an episode dedicated to Rakia. Let's uncover all the mysteries that we can about Rakia. My name is Nick Sadovsky. This is The Better... So let's get started. Macedonian rakia is a distilled spirit made from fermented fruit, usually grapes. It's actually a brandy. Now rakia is usually made out of grapes, but not always. Not too long ago, the website MacedonianCuisine.com had an article about 10 different things people have made rakia out of. Some of the things on the list were plums, cherries, pears herbs or herbs for Australian friends, walnuts, and even mistletoe. That's right, mistletoe. In the States, we use mistletoe to make women uncomfortable during the holidays. In Macedonia, everybody wins with mistletoe. It's a really fun read. I highly recommend you check it out. Now, what you guys usually see me drinking on the show is this. This is actually this. Lozovarakia comes from the winery Thiekvish, about 20 minutes south of Skopje. This is what I would consider a mainstream rakia. Now when I say that this is a mainstream rakia, I mean that this is the kind of rakia you can go to the store and buy. In Macedonia, this is usually what they sold on most store shelves. You could also get this in the States, places like Chicago, Detroit, Jersey, Ohio, Probably, probably Indiana too. Canada to Toronto. I'm not 100% sure on that. Consult your local group of Macedonian people. I'm sure they'll point you in the right direction, and you could buy your own, your very own bottle. Now, like I said, this particular bottle of rakia came from the Thiekvish winery in Macedonia. Its yellow color comes from being aged in a barrel, so they call this yellow rakia. They have a white version too, which is pretty much just clear, but they call it white rakia. Why they wouldn't just call it zlatna rakia and srebrna rakia is beyond me, but it's yellow and white. Now the Thiekvish winery in Macedonia has become a very popular tourist attraction. You can go, take the tour, you can see where they stack up all the giant barrels of wine. Um, you can eat at the restaurant and you can definitely sample all of their wines and the rakias. I went this past summer and I highly recommend it, I had a great time. Fun fact about the Thiekvish winery, their vineyard where they grow all of their grapes is located on the same latitudinal axis as Tuscany in Italy, Bordeaux in France, and Napa Valley in California. How do I know this? I looked at their YouTube videos. The wine region of Tikvish in Macedonia lies within the same latitude with the regions of Tuscany in Italy, Bordeaux in France, and Napa Valley in California. See? Now, as good of a brand as Thiekvish is, let's be honest, when most people talk about Rakia, they're not talking about a winery. Most people refer to this kind of stuff. Domashna Rakia, moonshine, homemade. It usually comes in an indeterminate bottle, whatever they had lying around. This particular one came in a bottle of Ladna Voda. It's just a water bottle that they just filled up with the Rakia. Now this is my Domash Narakia, it was actually a gift, and it's very, very good. That's why I won't drink this for the show, I'm sorry, I love you guys, but this is for special company only, because once it's gone, it's gone. I can't get another bottle of it. Now for the people that make Rakia at home, it's a big point of pride to be able to make it well and have a really quality bottle of Rakia. I would be the same way too, I'd be very proud of it if I could make a good, a good Rakia. However, every, most people that I've met that make Rakia claim that theirs is the best. Sadly, that's not always the case. That being said, how do you determine what makes a good rakia? Now, I am in no way a rakia expert. I don't claim to be an expert on the rakia. I'm not a sommelier of rakia. I don't even know what you, what you would call that. A sommelier, rakia, sommelier, rakia, samokia, samokia. I feel like that's a word already. 
Anywho, this is just 100% my opinion on how I feel what makes a good Dorakia. Yours could be different, yours could be just as accurate as mine, and again, I make no claims that I'm an expert, this is just how I approach a Rakia. Now I approach a good Rakia the same way I approach a good Scotch. Um, you want a good balance of it. Um, you want to be able to taste the power of the drink, it, you know, it's got some kick to it, but at the same time you don't want it to be so powerful that every time you sip it, it causes you, it causes you to cough and have like a, just an uncomfortable experience drinking your Rakia. It's not about that, it's supposed to be about relaxing, sipping it, enjoying, you know, the flavor of it, and, and enjoying your company of whoever you're with right now. It's a, it's a very social drink. You don't really drink Arakia alone. And at the same time, you don't want a weak Arakia. That's kind of a very unfulfilling experience. It's just kind of taste... It, it's hard to explain uh, the, the taste. It's just kind of like a weak... What's the point of this? I'd rather just drink a beer at, at this point. Uh, next, you never shoot Arakia. You always sip it. Uh, and you never ice it down. Uh, or you never cha you never mix it in like a Coke or anything like that. Arakia is its own thing, its own little shot glass, uh, and you sip it and you enjoy it all by itself. It is, it is a drink and really kind of a meal unto itself. <laughs> and of course, most importantly, when you have somebody over, you always fill their glass up first. You never fill up yours and then take a sip and then give it to you. And then give a glass of rakia to your guests. That's just rude. Honestly, that's just true with anything you drink or any kind of culture. Always have etiquette when it comes to your company. Now, this has been a very basic overview of rakia. I mean, I can probably do a whole two other episodes just on everything that we left out. I mean, hell, we didn't even cover mastica yet. But the point is, rakia is a very social and community drink. When I think of rakia, I think of warm hospitality. Going to somebody's house and having a great conversation with a nice glass of rakia. That's the kind of vibe that I grew up with, that I love, that I've always wanted to share on this show. Rakia is a big part of that. So, that being said, go ahead, leave some comments at the bottom of this video if you think I left anything out, if you have anything more to add to Rakia, or if you want to send me some Rakia, that would be alright too. With all that being said, I'm Nick Tsadovsky, this has been the Better Balkan, Nizdravia. I forgot to turn on the damn tree. <laughs> hey guys, if you like what you've been seeing and you want a more interactive experience, you can head on down to Facebook and search under the Better Balkan. While you're there, you'll be able to find links to all of my videos. Uh, you can chat with me directly, send me a message uh, if you have any questions about any of the recipes that I've covered, any of the music on the show, or if you have any, have any suggestions about recipes that you want to see me cover. If you have suggestions about recipes, please have a couple of pictures of these recipes. Sometimes these things are a little bit hard to find, so pictures would be a big help. Uh, if you have any questions about life in general, I'll be happy to answer them. Even if I know, don't know the answer, I'll be happy to make something up. Uh, that being said, hope you've been enjoying the videos. Keep on cooking.